I'm now joined by Sam Orpiz. Sam is coming off a first round victory against Cristiano Souza at this weekend's Bellator, which advanced him to the welterweight tournament semi-final. Sam, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, well, pleasure to be on the show. Uh, firstly, I wanted to pick up on the change of an opponent, because of course originally you were due to face uh, the Fightmaster winner, Joe Riggs, and it's he's quite a, a big, known in M big name in MMA because of what he's done in his career in the UFC and and then, of course, he pulled out and you had a uh, you had a, a relatively unknown guy come in, I suppose. So how did you feel about the change of opponent? Um, at first, when my opponent got changed, I was upset uh, for many reasons. The biggest reason was I thought maybe the whole fight would have got cancelled. I, I, you know, I've been training uh, you know, since my last fight in October to get ready for my next fight, and uh, which was which was this fight. And um, I was really upset. I was really looking forward to fighting Joe Riggs. Like you said, he's a big name. He was a, the fight master, a show winner. And it was just such a big step up in competition, such a big name. And I was really looking forward to it. But when I was very on my opponent, got switched, and I was fighting, I was, I was happy. It was just, I knew someone was going to be there, and I was going to have a fight. And, uh, you know, all my hard work was, was going to pay off no matter who showed up. And uh, I think Christian Silva, or Susan, excuse me, was a great opponent. He was undefeated. He had uh, a lot of knockouts to his credit, and um, it was, uh, I believe, it was a big win. Um, I guess a very tough opponent. It was. It was a big win, and he certainly was a tough opponent. I mean, when he came in, he was throwing some crazy capoeira kicks. So, what was your game plan going into the fight? <laughs> My game plan going into this fight was to be patient. Just be patient. Don't run in. Every time I saw his knockouts. Or him, you know, winning uh, his fights, uh, it was all someone kind of rushing in on him because he was so awkward with his movements and his striking, and he had such big punches. He, you know, really won those punches uh, when I seen him not knock guys down. And I didn't want, to, I didn't really want to be a highlight real knockout, you know. So uh, I stayed patient. I looked for my openings, and I had so much length for him. I mean, the the shirt dog said he was five foot ten. I, I'm guessing he was more five eight, five nine, uh, with the with the, the advantage on the length I had on him. And I just wanted to use my length. And you know, when when it was time for me to explode and land that big punch, I wanted to take it. And I saw my opportunity. He was backing up, and it was time to throw that big punch, and it landed, and I got the win. Yeah, you talk about the opportunity of the punch then. How how nice was it for you then when it did land and you see him drop to the mat? It was crazy because, um, you know, I'm not the type of person that acts like I'm this dangerous fighter and I hit so hard. You know, I do believe I hit hard, but when I hit him with that punch, I was, you know, I was like, oh man, I, like, I was kind of surprised it hurt him. Uh, from my point of view, but when I went back and I watched the video, man, his head totally turned. Uh, you saw that punch really hurt him. And uh, when he fell over, I just knew, you know, I'm not the type of person that enjoys hurting someone or anything, but I just knew I had to stay on him and just have the ref stop the fight. And right when I felt the ref's hands touch me, uh, it's the best feeling in the world. You know it's all over and, and you got the win. Yeah, I mean the the punch the punch was just brilliant. It just seemed to land bang on, and like you say, he dropped to the mat, and you you needed to pounce to get the finish. He at first said uh, he felt the finish was premature, but I mean it, it didn't seem premature at all. Did you think that it was a fair fair stoppage? I I think it was an extremely fair stoppage, and the reason why is I, I can understand sometimes you get hit and you fall you fall down you get knocked down and you're still coherent. Um, but when he fell off that right hook, he, he fell over his leg. His leg folded, so he lost control of, of the lower half of his body. I mean, uh, when something like that happens, that's just that's just bad news, you know. Um, uh, I think the ref did a great job. I think it was a very fair stoppage. And those last two punches that hit him landed flush on his face without him even trying to use his hand to cover. Um, but, you know, I think Cristiano was mad because he's a tough guy. He's a warrior, and... Uh, you know, some of those people, some people, man, they 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 still take a really bad beating before they want to quit. So uh, I, I think it was a great stoppage by the ref. Yeah, I thought it was a great stoppage as well. You like like you say, he is tough, but that's why the refs are there because sometimes you know the fighters are too tough tough for their own good. Now you're off next though. You move on to the the semi-finals, which is obviously brilliant. You're two fights away from a from a title fight, uh, and you're facing Andre Koroshkov, who's quite of course quite well known in Bellator as well. What are your thoughts on facing him as a player? I mean, he, he had an impressive win as well, didn't he? 
Oh, Andre Kulishkov is extremely impressive. He is very talented. He's very skilled. He has that ability to end fights. Um, he, he's just, he's nasty, man. He is, uh, he's a killer. But uh, they're going to be putting a killer in the cage with another killer when I fight him. So um, I think this is a great fight. Ray, and, and I'll tell you what, man, I think if this is going to be the fight where people are going to have their popcorn ready because they know two guys are going to show up to fight and it's going to be two tough people who are not going to want to quit, who are going to stand up with each other, and, you know, I, I, I really think this fight is going to be epic and it's, it's going to be the fight of the night that night. Does this almost feel like the final? Because I think it's fair to say that you two were the two most impressive on, on, you know, in the in the weight quarterfinals, does this almost feel like if you win this, you've won the tournament? It, you know, it's it, it kind of got that ring to it because you, like you say, you both had the spectacular finishes, didn't you? Yeah, you know, it's 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 interesting you say that, right? Because I believe, you know, when I looked at the bracket, I looked at who I thought would be my biggest test, or the you know the the guy that I'm looking at, like that I'm most impressed by, is definitely Andre. Um, I think he's the, you know, the most impressive fighter in the tournament. Um, I believe beating beating Andre would definitely do something to my self-esteem and my confidence that going into the finals, I, I would have that edge on my opponent knowing that, you know, I took out the toughest guy in the tournament. Um, but also with that being said, I never, ever will, ever, you know, there's no such thing as an easy fight. It just makes no sense, you know, no matter who you're fighting. Um, there's always a chance you can lose. There's always a chance you can win, too. But um, I just believe beating Andre would be such, uh, you know, just just that having that, uh, that confidence knowing I beat the best guy would definitely help me. But I think Adam McDonough and Nate Cooley are both excellent fighters and bring a lot, uh, you know, to, to the finals that... I'm really excited to, uh, the, if there's ever left in tournament, I'm excited to fight him, whoever it is. Yeah, but I can see what you're saying about Andre, though. I mean, of course, he's got one loss, and it was to Ben Askren, who was, you know, the the most dominant welterweight probably in the history of Bellator. And, of course, now that he's left the division, it's left that uh, title wide open, hasn't it? Of course, we've got Douglas Lima going to face Rick Horn. And whoever wins this tournament, then, is going to be the number one contender. So, it feels like the division's wide open now, because Ben Askren has been quite dominant, hasn't he? was, you know, he's so good. Ben Askren's unbelievable. He, 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 you look at that guy, it's like, how do you beat Ben Askren? But, I, you know, it's it's so exciting knowing that he's not in Bellator anymore. I'm not even saying that to be mean, but, you know, I don't think people want to watch a five-round fight where some guy laid on top of somebody for five rounds, you know? And, and I think... The 170-pound division in Bellator is putting on awesome fights, exciting fights, and I think it's going to keep happening, you know. I, I think Bellator basically sent a message saying they, they want people who are going to fight, who are going to be exciting, that are going to put shows on. Yeah, I, th I think you're right, and I think uh, we've got that with with uh, Lima and Horn, and I think we've got that with, with your fight as well, coming up against Andre Koroshkov. Oh, absolutely, man. Um, you know... I'm so excited to see who's going to win that belt because uh, it's just, you know, stylistically, I really like, you know, matching up against Lima and, and Rick Horn. You know, it's they're, they're two extremely talented guys, you know, basically at the top of the sport. And, uh, you know, my, my feeling and my belief going into this is that it's possible, man. you got a chance to win, and, and, and it's here now. So it's, I've been training very hard, and I'm excited. Well, congratulations on what was a fantastic performance and thank you for giving me your time today. Absolutely, Ray. Thank you uh, for, for interviewing me. I greatly appreciate it. And I just want to say, uh, you know, I always have a special place in my heart for the for, for the Brits. Uh, my grandmother was from Liverpool, England, and uh, she was the toughest woman I've ever met in my whole entire life, so I greatly appreciate the interview. My, my pleasure. Before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do some shout-outs. So let the listeners know about your Facebook and Twitter. If there's any sponsors, friends, family you want to shout out, feel free. Yeah, follow me on Twitter at SammyO85. Um, Facebook.com uh, slash Sam Orpiza. Um, just want to shout out everybody in my hometown of Briarcliff. I love all guys. 
Uh, all my sponsors, you know who you are. There's too many in the name. Team Balance in Philadelphia. Uh, my trainers, Robert Navone, Aaron Meisner, and Phil and Ricardo Miglaris. Uh, you guys are the best. And uh, make sure everybody tunes in April 4th uh, as I take on Andre Korshkov in the uh, semifinal of the Bellator Welterweight Tournament. I can't wait to see that fight, Sam. Thanks very much.